send it over to Crepo on stage. He's going to take a look at G2's victory. Hey, guys. I'm here with uh, Luka Perkovic. A little bit of a close game. Closer than you expected, maybe? Uh, yeah, definitely closer than I expected. <laughs> Um, gonna take it back to uh, picks and bans first. You're playing the Lissandra Zillia matchup last week. Uh, we saw Ryu get solo killed in that matchup. Uh, how do you think it plays out? Is it really hard to play? Like, is there pressure to be put for you on the Lissandra side, or is it just so hard uh, against the wave clear? Um, it's just that uh, Zillian can just like literally perma push. Like, he has a better wave clear than Lissandra, and if I get hit by bombs, since I'm so short range, I can get stunned. And then there's like gang pressure from Trash and Elise, and especially Elise. Like Elise versus Lissandra is really good early game. I cannot really pressure him because if I go perma push and I have no vision set, I will just die. So I had to like just let him get mid priority and farm up. And then after, sorry, no problem. <laughs> then after I just go sideline and I have more pressure than Zillian because Lissandra sideline is really good. Yeah. So this was one of the first few games where we see uh, you as in the mid lane not actually having that much pressure or kills. It kind of felt like it slowed down the game a lot for you guys. Uh, do you feel when you don't have the winning matchup, G2 struggles a little bit in the mid game? Um, I wouldn't say it's like that because I think we can play without the mid pressure. It just, I don't know, the game was just so slow. I don't even know what happened, honestly. It was just really slow and really hard for us to engage in them because of Trash Lantern, Zillian Ult, Clans, and stuff like that. Corky buying QSS second item was. Uh, they had a good siege comp, and they played it actually pretty good. And last fight, they just got caught out, and we ended. Yeah, after a very slow mid game, you guys tried to force a couple of plays, the dive in the mid lane, the teleport top. That kind of backfired just a little bit. I see you smiling, so you must agree. Do you think you can't afford to make those plays? If you look at like Vitality and H2K in the first place, they seem to be a little more crisp in, in the macro game, rather than you, where you guys have the edge in like the full-on skirmish. Is that something that worries you heading to playoffs? Uh, well, definitely one thing we have to work on is just improving our vision control. Comes with the communication and uh, overall vision. Once we improve that, I think we will be able to beat everyone easily. So once you play the game correctly, you can beat everyone. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for your insight, Luca. Uh, for more on that match, let's send it over to the analyst desk. Well, thank you very much. Uh, great interview and always fun to hear from Perks. And we have his coach here with us, Joey uh, Youngbox Deltonfall. Welcome. Congrats on yet another win. Thank you very much. Um, I always love listening to Perks because he's one of those players that just new burst on the scene is doing really well, but is also really, really confident. How do you go about as a coach kind of managing and micromanaging that and also maybe his personality? Uh, yeah, he's definitely uh, an interesting character to coach. Um, he's very talented and he's a little bit arrogant, but as long as he can back up his words, you know, he can be as arrogant as he wants. <laughs> To that point, he you know has a lot of hype around him coming into the LCS. How have your experiences been with Perks on molding him to the way you want the team to play? It, has that at all been an issue? It hasn't been an issue at all. I didn't expect him to be as good as he was coming into the split. Um, but he surprised me in practice and he can play a lot of different styles. And in the beginning of the split, we just showed one style. But now he's uh, going to the Victor, the Lissandras, um, even Lulu. So I, I think he's really easy to coach, and he's also really easy to put on champions that might not be just good for him. Yeah, I love that you bring that up. Obviously, it's not just Perks. It's all the other members of Well that have been showing strong plague. But as you bring it up, he's transitioning to other styles as a team. Did you think that was a necessity? Because we have seen some issues with that go hard or go home style of G2 in the last couple of weeks. I don't think the go hard, go home style is uh, a weakness of ours because all our fights are very uh, calculated. We know that their fights are coming and uh, we just like to put a lot of pressure on the map and pressure on our opponents and try to force them to make mistakes instead of just having a very slow game like this game where uh -huh. uh, nothing is really forced out of the opponent. One thing looking at Coaches Week as a whole we've looked at is players that or coaches that were players formerly. Um, for yourself, when it comes to looking at vision control uh, and these aspects of the game, do you think that's an advantage for you as a player previously to other coaches that maybe don't have the experience when it comes to talking about how you should move on the map? I definitely think it's a pretty big advantage that I've been a pro player myself. Um, and I think that teams that aren't really high in the ranking benefit a lot from having a, pro pl a former pro player. Um, and I think the better teams have more benefits from a life coach. So. When I got into this team, I thought I was going to teach them a lot because they're a very new team and they actually really surprised me. So there isn't that much that I have to teach them because they, a lot of their players uh, know more than I do about the game. But because I was a pro player, I can still ask the right questions so they can improve from that.
Well, some very good insight to start off. And of course, we'll have you with us for the next couple of games. So we'll get to hear more from you in that. Because we're only one game in and just getting started. Up next, the Giants will take on Vitality as they look to avoid the Spring Promotion Tournament. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. No, 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 no. That song is so good, though. No, I get it. Oh, it's oh, so, bad. so bad. What? Yes, 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 I yes. I love it, man. Oh. What song? Perks around the side. They may not need a big barrel once again. That's how long this has gone back and forth. ika has got the ult on himself. Chrono shift, but he's not down. His Perks claws down one. And in comes the Brahmos. The Ika and Rollins are caught and locked up. Even with that, he's gone down. Gilius and Sprottle knocked up by the big poppy hammer. Uh, you call go, go, go. Coming. I pass it. They want to fight. ITP. Perks out. Nice. I stun him. Nice. Get, 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 Graves, Graves. I, I get Corky. Yeah. No flash. Come, come. Nice. Nobody can stop him here, and that's gonna be a victory for G2 Esports.